Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview Brighton Hove Albion versus Everton at the Amex. Where last year, somehow spectacularly, yeah. Steve, we, 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 uh, we won 5 1. And yet, even on that day, I was not fully convinced we were going to no. win till the fifth one went in. No, me neither. I was exactly the same. It was, uh, it was one of the highlights. Well, mm. it was the highlight yeah. of last season in regards to football games that we watched. And. Uh, be great if we could do it again. Yeah, it would be. And when you say highlights, it was highlights, obviously, when the game was finished and we'd won 5 1, but I didn't feel like it was a highlight yeah. when I was watching it. I was. I don't think I've ever been so nervous. When they got one back, it was yeah. kind of like, oh, here we go, good draw. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it, was a, it was a great win last season, and mm. it's kind of hopefully, well, hopefully this weekend we can pull. So well, obviously, I don't think we're going to be pulling that type of result off again. But even if we could get something down there, it'd be a great result because they're a very good team, aren't they? Yeah, it's a tough fixture. And as we saw at Goodison this season, um, you know, eighty percent of the possession. Yeah. I mean, we were very unlucky. Let's be honest. At Goodison, it was a even though they had a lot of the ball and um, they weren't really doing anything. And obviously, no. it was a wicked deflection that took it over over Jordan Pickford um, with about six or seven minutes left of the game in a game that. Uh, well, it felt like we were just going to get over the line. And sometimes mm. they're the biggest disappointments, aren't they, when you don't? But um, Everton, Everton just, we just, I don't know, we just need to get back to the way we were doing things away from home. Not that we've like spectacularly gone away from them yeah. of late, but we could just do it one way where everyone goes, oh, I wasn't quite expecting that because that's the general feeling around, I think, at the moment is. There's obviously a lot of worry. There's a lot of frustration with the point situation and the ownership situation. Yeah. We could just do it, just just go. On. I was great that, really surprised by that, and and you know, just just some kids that getting away no, from no, where we are. Yeah, exactly. And I think the fans need a bit of a lift, and also put the players need to obviously that we we need to start picking up points again. We stop picking up points, mm. even obviously the home game recently against Crystal Palace, which was really disappointing, but. If if you look at Sean Dyche's Everton team away from home, it has it has it, it has performed really well. Like I was mm. looking, talking before about the Brentford game, I feel like we need the type of that type of performance mm. tomorrow where um, we start. We need to start. I think one thing I've noticed about Everton away from home is when they start quick, they, like they get an early goal. Brentford mm. away was like that. Obviously West Ham places like that we've gone this season and, and picked up points, but obviously with. Bre Really tough game with Brighton. They have, what is it? They've only really lost one game, is it? At home this season, I think. Yeah, two, yeah. is it? West, is it West Ham and West Ham and Newcastle? Did they lose to Newcastle? No, they battled no, they 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 Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just one win. I think since lost, August. Yeah, yeah, since August. So they've come into a bit of form. Obviously, they've got a bit of a break at the moment with the Europa League as well. Yeah. They haven't got many games of that because uh, they qualified through straight through to the, their last 32. Um, but I think we just got to go there, and make it difficult, and but but try and but just try and stay in the game. If it, if it is like if we are one nil down or or it is nil nil, I think it's just important that we just don't like lose our shape and and, and try and nick something. But it is again, it's going to be an extremely difficult game, and um, it'd be one of those games where if you could walk away with a point, you'd be delighted. Mm. I mean, their the home record is good, but it's not amazing. They've drawn drawn, yeah. drawn quite a lot of games and. Um, a lot, so a lot of the time, it, it, it seems to be that maybe when they're playing, when they've got a couple of games. So obviously they're playing in Europe, yeah. But obviously they're playing the, the FA Cup next week as well. Yeah. And you just wonder with Zerbi, he sometimes he's not someone who necessarily keeps playing the same team every week. He likes to change. He likes to rotate it. And I just wonder whether with the league and he, you just think throw a trophy there. He likes you oh, like going for a trophy. Just think, wonder if he'll take one eye off and maybe just rotate it a little bit, just because there's a couple of games this week. No, he, he could because he, like I mentioned uh, before on, on the daily, it's like he changed. You know, I think he's changed his goalkeeper fifteen times this season. Mm. Obviously, for Bregan and and Steele, and he hasn't really had a settled team all season. Even in, if you look at the the fullback areas, they they haven't really kept a solid full solid team all season they've been a bit all over the place at times and like you mentioned there he does like to tinker with his team so it's one of them where be, they could they could take their eye off the ball obviously with Wolves coming up I think it was in the FA Cup yeah, yeah. Um, 
because the reality is we need. I think if they play at their best, then they they probably nine times out of ten they probably will beat us. But we didn't need to have a bit of an off day, hopefully, and um, we just need to take our chances when we get them, Ben. Because the, the reality is we haven't been taking our chances. No, that's that's the top and bottom of it, isn't it? We we don't have a goal scorer because I mean we. The core has been out for two months, and it's just it's you, you, We all knew the night he went out against uh, Burnley. Mm. We all worried, and then to see him missing, and it's not a coincidence. We know our style of play is very, you know, reliant, it, reliant yeah. on him as a player playing in in um, just behind Dom, and away games has been huge, and it's where we've picked up the most points, obviously, and it's where I just I. I the thing about the away situation is, for me, is it can't become, or I think it has become maybe for some people, Relax. a crutch. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and going, oh, don't worry about the own form because we're good away from home. But, but the, the, the reality is we play some tough sides now. So we've beaten teams that you go, actually, we should be beating those teams away from home. But we're going up against tough sides now away. And that that's my... That is my worry, but at least we have the Corey back, who's been yeah. a main part of it, and can take the pressure off Dominic Carver Lewin and add something that that has been desperately missing in the two, you know, the two months since since he's been out, and I think he's only played, obviously he's played two home games in in that, you know, obviously when he came back uh, in in January against Villa, against Villa yeah. yeah, and then obviously he played on on Monday night against against Crystal Palace, so. It, we haven't seen him since the Birmingham they play away and it'll be interesting to see if that affects or how it changes things because you know we've yes we've we've uh, we've been great at Wolves yeah. and, and obviously we've played like City and but the teams that we're supposed to beat you know we're, this is I mean we're not, I'm not saying we're supposed to be Brighton but te- pe- people have got it in their head because the away record and because we won there last season yeah because we won there and because he was a big part of us winning there last yeah, season yeah. so I think that is key, and it's key because he's cu- he's come back against Palace. He's had that sort of. I looked at Monday night and looked at his, and that's his game to get back into it. He's come through that. The manager's yeah. confirmed he's fit. He hasn't suffered any. No. So this is the game now. We look on. He could make a big difference to us. No, he, he can. He, he's, he, I've heard you say many times. He is key to Everton, mm. and he's key to how Sean Dyche wants to play. Mm. And. Yeah, and if you look at the stats, the stats don't lie. Away from home, he's our most important player. Mm. At home, he's probably not as... He probably doesn't do it as much, but he's still very important. But I think for, for Everton to... Well, if you look at Everton's away form, it's been basically reliant on, on the Corey. Mm. Well, well, but from my point of view, I think the, the worry for me, I think that from the, from the team's point of view, they've got, they've start, got to start getting... Wins back on the board because what is it? I think it's two months now, isn't it? Yeah, without, yeah. without a win, and you don't want to get into that that habit. And this is the third season in a row that's happened as well. No, no. You know what happened under Benitez? It happened under Lampard. Oh, yeah. You know we going through long stretches without a win. And at first, it you saw at the start of the season. Yeah, well. a, yeah, yeah. Didn't but win for two months, did we? No, no. But it's that year. middle bit, isn't it? That that. It's it's like you think about it. Where in those in, in all three seasons. You look at it and go, well, if we'd won a couple of games in that run, the difference that oh, would have yeah. made to us, you know, yeah. under Melisa's, that's where we were dragged into the relegation fight. We were bobbing around 12th for ages and then just went winning, was winning. winning. Yeah. And suddenly we just like, it looked like we we just dropped like a stone, you know, we beat we beat Arsenal under Lampard last year. It was the same. It was just, it was just the same. It was just, we'd beat Crystal Palace away, at home, sorry. And then we just didn't win a game and it was just, it piles on and piles on and piles on. And yeah, he didn't win another game, did he? And then, <laughs> you know, last season with Dice, he came in. He obviously came in when that spell was happening for Lampard. And what he did, at least, was he was winning a game maybe every every three games or yeah. something. And yeah, that's what we need at the moment, you know, every three or four games if we're winning and we're getting a draw, because we know we're good at the back. We just can't put the we just can't put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. And it's just the difference that and that's where that's where they're Brighton. They had a good start of the season. Yeah. But now, since that, you know, they just seem to be winning every three games or whatever it is. And that's why they are in the t- around the top seven. And that's why they are um, still looking to get into Europe via the league. Yeah. And, and they are in Europe because they just manage to keep ticking over and ticking over. And that's where someone like us has got to get back to that, just yeah. winning those. Because the difference it makes is huge. No, and especially with obviously what's going on off, off the pitch as well in regards to... 
potential points coming back. How well in the next, what they're saying in the next couple of days potentially, but they've been they've been told forty eight hours, and mm. then yeah, that's still not still still sitting here. But it'd be a great, it could be a good lift for the, the players as well. Going mm. obviously, if they could get something back in the next day or two. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Brighton. I think what is it? I think they've won the last four out of six. I think it is mm. all that. So. Um, yeah, I think their they're, they're aim now will be looking at, I think they've got Man United, I think they're four points off Man United or five points off Man United. So they're in, they're in a great spot of still getting having a really good season again. Yeah, well they are. I mean, again... I that was the worry one, I think we spoke a few times yeah. at the end of the season. Like The the, the, the thing well, for them is, can they back it up? Well, it's interesting, Brighton, isn't it? Because we have suddenly got this, this idea of what they are and who they are. And you look at the table sometimes and you, you look where they are and you go, God, they should be higher, or you yeah, think they're yeah. higher, and you're like, hang on. Yeah. This is a team that have only had one good one good season in the Premier League. Don't get me wrong, they've built to it. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's like the one-season wonders. They've built to where they are. Last season, brilliant for them. And then they sold, like, you know, two of their most important players. And they've had injuries, yeah. and, if you know, things have slightly changed for them. And it's... More games. More games. Yeah. And, and you're like, the expectation's gone up. Yeah. And you're thinking, actually, this is a really solid season for yeah, them. Yeah. And the idea that they're not doing as well as people th- thought they were is a is a great credit to them and what they've done. Yeah. And it's 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 weird how sometimes we we flick that switch and go, oh, they're not having a, oh, they're not having a great run or this or that. Well, they're coming off the back of a five 0 win. Yeah. Against Sheffield United, you know yeah. where um, they they obviously Mason Allgate obviously got sent off for Sheffield United, but he took the time and then. Got the goals in the second half, it exploded. But let's just have a look at the team from last week for Brighton against Sheffield United. And as you can see there, um, for Bruggen in goal, uh, Lewis Dunk obviously massively important for them on set pieces. He's hugely important. Um, Pascal Gross in there, uh, Lamptey. I think it was good against yeah, Sheffield United. Yeah, Thoma and Danny Welbeck up front, I think, is is Sorry. massively underrated, I think, as a player. Massively underrated. Um, but it's Gross that I just want to look at for a minute. Let's have a little look at Pascal Gross's numbers. 23 games, 4 goals, XG of 5.3, our assist 9. His and heat map. XA of 6 points. 4, 6. 4, 8. Don't have to whisper it. Uh, and as you can see, his heat map there all over the pitch. Uh, it's funny because you know, I've watched him a few times this season. He play, he's one of those players you can play anywhere. Like he's played at left back for them this season. Yeah. He played at right back. Yeah. Attacker midfield, right wing, mm. left wing, and his heat map obviously suggests that as well. It's a, mm. he's a, he's just a very capable footballer, very good on the ball, very good on set pieces as well. So uh, mm. he's he's another one. I think you look at him as well. I think he's thirty-two years of age. But yeah. he, he, he just looks dead easy for him yeah. the way he plays. And I think that's a good thing with Brighton. They've got a good mix of yeah. youth and, and yeah. experience. Yeah, and they've used team. The, yeah, and they've had obviously Lallana and Milner yeah, still knocking around. And yeah, yeah, they, they've done. They've got done. good pros, haven't they? Yeah, Milner and Lallana really good pros for them. Like won stuff at big yeah. clubs. James Milner, City, Liverpool, England, Lallana, Liverpool. And I, I'm sure that probably helps um, players settle down as well when they come into the squad, when, yeah. you know, some of the foreign lads and... Um, it helps to manage it as well, because yeah. the reality is them type of players will run the dressing room, I yeah. imagine. It won't Absolutely. be... And the manager probably doesn't have to get involved in as much. Yeah. His job is to coach the team. Mm. And, he, and obviously he's done another good job this season. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, like, yeah, yeah. People will start him. looking at him, won't they, now with yeah. all the with the vacancy Mary have got around, maybe Stan. Liverpool, uh, yeah, yeah, that type of stuff. So. Right, let's have a look at the uh, stat pack from the game. This Saturday at the Amex Stadium, Everton played Brighton in the Premier League. The two teams have met in the Premier League a total of 13 times, three draws between the two teams, with four wins going to Brighton and six to Everton. Four Everton wins came at Goodison, while two were at the Amex Stadium, including last year's 5-1 win. In the reverse fixture this season at Goodison Park, Everton and Brighton drew 1-1. So far this season, Brighton sits 7th, they've won 10 games, drawn 8 and lost 7. Everton sits 17th after a 10 point seduction, they have won 8 games, drawn 6 and lost 11. Everton this season have kept 8 clean sheets but Brighton have kept 3. Brighton's top goal scorer this season is Jao Pedro with 8 goals. Everton's top scorer is Adelaide Decore with 6. 
Leading the assists between the two teams is Pascal Gross with 9 assists, Dwight McNeil follows with 5. Everton topped the tackles list for all the clubs this season with 507 total tackles. Brighton are 17th with 407, although they do see a lot of the ball during the games. There you go. Good work from Ned there, getting all the stats for you. Uh, obviously, we've won the last couple of years there as well, haven't we? Not just last year with a great win, but the year before. It, obviously, it can get massively confusing because Benitez was the manager yeah. and you're just like, you don't think about the years, you think about the managers and there's too many managers to think, was that last? Well, yeah. Frank didn't, I was just saying. Frank never. Frank never even went there. Frank never went there. COVID. And he loved going back down south, didn't he? He did. So it's a bit weird. Especially that he, on Mondays. Especially, well, <laughs> since they get back home. No, but I think our actual record down there, I think we've lost two since mm. we've been since they've been in the Premier League. Yeah, we had the year uh, very controversial Michael Keane three two uh, when the there was a penalty that never was. And then there was uh, one under silver we got beat. It was 2-0. the game after we beat Burnley five one, wasn't it? Yes. Over Christmas that yeah, time. Yeah, it was, yeah. Because we were, all, we were flogged basically. Yeah, it was two days later, wasn't it? So the record's so. been the record is quite good there. But let's have a little look at the side obviously for Everton that played on Monday nights against Crystal Palace. I mean what what changes do you think are needed. I mean, I can see two immediately. Well, I was saying before, I actually think he might play James Garner at wide. <gasps> um, Come on. Give me your exactly. workings out. So, he, so I, I looked at the... I was talking about the Brentford game earlier on in mm. the season, and he played McNeil on the left, and yeah. he played Garner on the right, and he played Onana, Decorey, and Garner Gay in the middle. Mm. And I actually think, away from home, that type that can work, mm. because I think that right side's going to be going to be whoever's playing at right back's going to have a tough job with Matoma and obviously Stupian as well at left back it's a, yeah. really, it's a really good left hand side and I think James Garner can cut uh, what I noticed as well when he does that he comes inside and makes mm. it a bit like a, a, compact, a compact midfield so I don't know I've just got a funny feeling he might go with James Garner because again I know you mentioned that on your ratings I think I don't think he wants to drop any of them <clears throat> no. and I think that, that could be his best way of getting them all in rather than um, leaving Onana off the team which, he, again, I think Onana has got a start on mm. Saturday. Well, um, the last time when we played McGullison, we didn't have Onana that day either. And he played Garner and Guy in the middle of the park. Uh, <coughs> yeah. And we only had 80% of the football that day as well. So, the, he has got form for it. I, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if he left Onana out again, almost looking at the situation of not having loads of the ball. But I think mm. that would be massively counterproductive for wanting to play a certain way. I think yeah. I think if you're going to play on the counter-attack, you have to at least get on the ball and not rely on the long ball. And I think that's where Onana, for me, uh, for me, Onana starts, absolutely. Mm. And then for me, you have to make the choice as the manager between Ghana and Odessa Ghana Gay. And I think... I, I I said on Monday night that I thought he bottled it. I think he I thought he bottled that decision. Now he he would he'll tell me differently. I imagine, but I just thought he bottled it. Yeah. Oh, nice to say could he because the easy drop because he's been out injured. But I just think certainly at home you need Onana now. Whether he'll leave Onana out again, I don't know how you can do that. I really don't. I just think he breaks up the play really well, Onana. Yeah. All away from home, and he can get you up the pitch with one pass. Yeah. Where I don't think the other two can do that. But there's an I think there's almost like this idea that he's like a luxury player and he's not. No, he's he's not. a great tackler. Yeah. He reads the game well. <laughs> and as you just said there, his passing gets you on the go. And because he's such a good passer and his control is so good, it looks simple what he does, but it's not simple. Well, he looked when he came on against City, he was probably Everton's best player, really. Yeah. <laughs> and he played that ball for it's about I know he was offside. Yeah, but that's not but his fault, do, is but, he, but he can do that, that's what I mean. He, he tried it a few times the other night. He, 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 let's be honest. He, I know, obviously, he scored the goal, so it's con- but he, he, he was Everton's best player mm. <laughs> in the, no, whole, game, yeah. the whole game. Listen, I think um, you've, you've got to play your best players. It's a tough one because Jack Harrison, did he do enough to get his place back when he mm. came on the other night? I don't know. He was all right. I think he'd done enough to get his place back off Ashley Young. Now, whether you're yeah. suggesting a tactical change, now, maybe that's... That's me, you've got a choice out of Dwight McNeil and Harrison. And the reality is, McNeil will probably start due to set pieces. Mm. Because he's the only one who looks like... No, he is, corner. he is. A set, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you're going to play away and you're scoring from set pieces, you have to be. You have to look at it and go, well, who would replace Dwight McNeil? And what are the chances of scoring a goal from, say, Harrison going on the left yeah. and him crossing the ball? What are the chances of us scoring compared to the chances of Dwight McNeil putting a set piece in, which he's done numerous times this season? And the answer you come to is Dwight McNeil will start the game. 
and it's rightly so. Maybe if Dan June was available and you had a different way of playing, mm. you go, oh, that maybe. Yeah. But I just think for the set pieces, having the Corey in there, having Onana in there, mm. it makes more sense. And I think you, that's where the, that's where the managers like looks at it and, and looks at the, the way the way it all it all it's all set up. Would you would say would you bring Harrison in for? Um... I'd have Harrison on the right because he's yeah. been left out of game now. Yeah. He's been left out of game, and I think. Um, I, I just think there has to be there has to be a way we play um, that isn't just long ball. No. You can go long ball with on the team, but at least with on the team, you're not relying on long ball. And I know, and I don't I don't know if it'll be as bad as what it was um, on on Monday. But we showed there last year what kind of attacking side we can be, a counter attacking yeah. side we can be. With the players we've got, and there's, there's not loads of changes from last year when we played there. No. You know, it'd still be Dominic Carvalho Noon, it'd still be Decore, you know, still Dwight McNeil, who had a brilliant game down there last yeah, season, maybe brilliant. his best game in Evans year, by the way. Everything just clicked that day, and who knows it? You know, I'm not expecting that to happen like it like it did last year. No. But Brighton do have form. Brighton do allow people to sc- yeah, chances. Do, yeah, yeah. So. The manager's got choices. I just hope he doesn't take the safe option and just be like, oh, I'm playing two holding midfielders. No, I agree, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just think, um, yeah, it needs a freshen up after Monday. And I'll also be interested to see if he keeps Ben Godfrey at right back, mm. if Coleman's fifth yeah. as well. So I think he, I think I think he, he will because of the pace and the time. And he can get yeah. back, can't he? So. But it'll be an interesting one. Um, mm. Yeah, Evan could do with something this weekend. Obviously, we aren't, we aren't in the bottom three as it you know Luton don't play this weekend no. um and if we can get something this weekend and just just again add pressure on because the pressure's been on us that's the way it feels at the moment it feels like the pressure's on us no, that's what I mean Forrest I think Forrest are away to Villa as well so even if we can get, get something as well get it I think we could hmm. bring them closer into it and like to well, that's it isn't it Palace. it's about it's about so not only about Luton, it's about getting closer to those people so it's not just there not just becomes a a uh, one horse sort of yeah. you know two horse race. Yeah, yeah, you want to get away from that, and obviously getting some points back, uh, which you'd imagine we'll find out next, no later than next week. Mm. You'd imagine as well. Um, so get get a result here, get some <coughs> points back, and before you know it, the table might look a little bit better, and everyone feels a little bit better about it. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Yeah. Tell us how you're feeling ahead of this one. It's going to be tough, but yep. we've proved that the last couple of years we can go there and we can do a job. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, join us over on Toffee TV Premiere for daily live exclusives and no vids. Well, loads of vids, but vids without ads and podcasts without ads. Link is in the description. QR codes come on screen now. See you later.